Hello everyone, my name is Jose Delgado. I'm a corporate commercial tax attorney for my sins. Um, what we're tackling today is uh, we're often approached by investors who are seeking to establish a property portfolio and they're looking to understand what is the optimum or the ideal structure to acquire or commence or build their, their property portfolio in. Again, we've got uh, do nothing and just buy everything into your name. Uh, do I put it into a close corporation? Do I put it into a PTY Limited? Or is a trust a potential solution for me? So as a property investor, uh, this is not your primary residence. So the primary residence exclusion or exemption is not a factor to consider here. What one needs to consider is uh, your exposure because you're going to be acquiring property. You're going to be gearing it through uh, borrowing funds from the bank. You also have tenant risk. You have potentially uh, risk when you sell the property. So one needs to consider the risk aspect uh, very, very uh, carefully. The other option is a closed corporation or a PTR Limited. Uh, very often a better tax uh, position than just buying into your own name. Uh, and alternatively, we have the, the trust. So we're going to do a little comparison between the different uh, options available to you. And I'm going to group closed corporations and companies together because effectively it's the same thing. So as we said earlier, buy into your own name. Transfer, transfer duty is the same across all different entities. So that's not a, a consideration at all. So you can take that off the table. Do you buy into your own name? Cease your PDY from a risk or a trust from a risk perspective? Definitely not in your name. You could have your rental property portfolio costing you your home. Your rental portfolio could cost you your business or your marriage or vice versa. Your marriage could cost you your portfolio or your business could collapse and you lose all your investment properties. And then of course you have your uh, ultimate demise, which eventually is going to result in the portfolio not continuing to the next generation, which I think is uh, often a, a very important aspect of why one would establish a, or set up a property portfolio. So having the property portfolio in your own name, no asset protection, you're going to pay too much tax if you have a sizable portfolio because you're going to be earning a lot of rental income, which will push you into the top tax bracket at 41%, not ideal. On your demise, you're going to be paying capital gains tax at a rate of 13.6%. You will have executor's fees at 3.5% plus VAT if the executor is a vendor. And then you also have estate duty on your portfolio at 3.5%, uh, um, 20%. Sorry. Uh, also, another consideration is massive costs on death. Uh, in the event that your estate is able to carry all those death costs, the properties have to then be transferred into your heirs' names, whether that be a spouse or children or dependents, and there's then conveyancing fees. There are mortgages that may have to be settled and cancelled and transferred. So if you look at all those sort of obstacles and hurdles that you create by acquiring a portfolio through your, in your own name, I think uh, uh, it's, it's not ideal, uh, commonsensically. Then you have a close corporation or a PTY Limited. Uh, problem with most uh, investors that we come across that use this structure, uh, they're oblivious to the fact that it is not the ideal structure from a sale perspective. If you ever sell a property, the capital gains tax position is very, very high. It's 18.6% uh, effectively, plus the dividends tax, which brings you to around 31%. Also, on the event of uh, you generating rental income and you're in a cash flow position or cash positive position, you're going to always pay tax at least at 28% in a company or a close corporation. In contrast, if you put the property into a trust, a trust is the only entity in our law where you are able to distribute the income from the trust through to beneficiaries. You may have beneficiaries that have got uh, very low tax rates or zero tax rates, and you're therefore in a position where you can create some tax efficiencies by using a trust. So contrast CC company versus trust, uh, tax-wise a trust is uh, the more efficient tool or entity to utilize. Again, we find people using CCs and companies not structuring the ownership. So in the event that you are in a default position in a CC or a PDY, make sure that you address the ownership of that entity because you're exposing the portfolio to your vagaries because you own the shares or you own the member's interest. On top of that, outside of the risk, on your passing, the shares and the member's interest will also form part of your estate which will trigger the capital gains tax at 13.67, executor's fees at 3.5 plus VAT, and estate duty at 20%. In contrast, a, a trust doesn't die, it can continue in perpetuity, and you will not pay any of those death costs or duties or taxes or executor's fees. So in summation, residential property portfolios, uh, the ideal structure is a trust.
Worst case, it's a company CC and by trust, and hopefully never in your own name.